It's break of day in Jabiru, Northern Territory. And for the Patriot Campers crew, the water crossing into Arnhem Land has been too high to pass. It's held up plans for days now, and Justin and the rest of the convoy are hoping the water starts to recede soon. I don't know. Do you reckon the Megatura can do it? Yep. What about the Ranger? Do you think the Ranger can do it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How's the confidence? You're not scared? No. You know what we don't want to end up like? That? That guy. Or his mate over there. <laughs> that guy did not have a good day. <laughs> no. He didn't have a good day at all. No. What do you reckon, mate? It's scary, man. We're just going to have to wait it out. Well, let's go fishing for a couple of hours, guys. Darling, and we'll see if we can find you a crocodile too. Yeah? Come on, let's go for a fish. We'll come back in a couple of hours and see what it's doing. Today's mission got up nice and early, so I grabbed Sarah, grabbed Maya, Maddie to steer the boat, went out to find Maya a crocodile. And maybe a barramund. The East Alligator River divides Jabiru and Arnhem Land, and it's known for fast flowing water and is a great fishing spot. And the humans aren't the only ones who know about the fish. Mia might be in for a surprise today. I wanted to go out and see the river. And I wanted to see a crocodile. We don't get to see crocodiles at home. I've got to say, all the way up here, we've copped the flies and the heat. Getting on that boat and just feeling that breeze and the beautiful scenery uh, was out of control. That's magic, eh? Hey? Being on this river, we really know we're in the Northern Territory. This is like nothing I've ever seen before. The Northern Territory is picture perfect all year round, but it's also home to treacherous conditions on the water with dangerous rock bars, fallen trees and logs. But Mia only has one thing on her mind. Croc. Where? God, you guys have a good It's gone under. Oh my gosh, how did you see that? Yep, there's his head. Look, Danny. Like, Look, crocodile. Under the tree. Look under the tree, right oh, in front. Yeah. See those two trees? Yeah, I do. Sure enough, really early into the trip, we come across our first crocodile. And to be honest with you, you always get those chills up your bones when you see him sitting on the bank and you're in the boat in the river. There he is. There's a crocodile. There's your first croc. Yeah. What do you think? I see it. But isn't that one right there? No, that's a... No. <laughs> Up there. I'm so confused. You can see him, yeah? Yeah, I can see him. Yeah. That's cool. That is And very that's cool. a baby one. Whoa. What do you think of that, babe? Seeing the first crocodile was kind of nerve-wracking, but as we went on, it got better and better. OK, now we can reverse. <laughs> what, are we too close? Yeah. No, we are too close. Wow. I was so keen to see that first crocodile, but I must say, I kept pedalling back in that boat. Oh, there he goes, there, there he goes. goes, there he goes. Goodbye. That's why you need to stay in the middle. Now, the look on Mia's face when she saw that first croc, that's exactly what we're here for. There you go, Mia. You didn't have to wait long. Your first croc. You thought that was the croc. <laughs> no, because I couldn't see the whole thing. Well, I thought that was a croc, to be honest. That's mission accomplished for Justin. He's been promising his daughter Mia that she'd see a croc the whole journey up. Justin knows that if there's crocs around, there's fish around. So he decides to cast a line. What you want to try and do is not hook anybody in the boat. <laughs> if okay. you can. So that's that's the start. Something I enjoy doing, just being out in the boat in this country, that's what it's all about. Oh yay! That was a good cast. No, it wasn't. Swim, my fishy, swim. Daddy's on. No! Daddy's no. on. No! Strike, I'm on. No. Grab the net, babe. No. It's only a little one. Oh, yuck. What is that? Nasty. Dad caught a catfish, but I don't think that really counts. Can I grab him off? No, that's right, babe. It's dirty in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> don't you, like, keep it in there? That's not what I wanted. It's hard to focus on fishing when crocodile spotting is on the agenda and the whole crew are a bit distracted. They really wanted to see a big one, but none more so than Mia. Oh, that's awesome. That's a beauty. See, that's what I thought a crocodile would look like. <laughs> well, that'd be a crocodile. That, that's a good one. That's that a good croc. A good Don't annoy that one. <laughs> Something will come and bite your head off. 
What do you reckon? He's big enough to eat you. That one's big. That is a good croc. That is a beauty, Maya. Um, no. Oh. That's cool, huh? Yeah! yeah! Look at that. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> Look, you can see where his body was. He slid all the way down. <laughs> you can see the sliding marks. It was amazing after we saw the first one. We got around the next corner. There's another one, then another one, then another one. And it seemed like they just kept getting bigger as we got down the river. Oh, look at that one. Jesus, Benny, camera, Benny. Holy crap. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> now, that is a crocodile, darling. Look at his tail. No, Daddy, Whoa. stay away. It's OK. Daddy, it's OK. No, no, no. You can't get in the boat, babe. Wow. That is a big crocodile. There he is. Look. Oh, he's going up. Look at the head on it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Daddy, don't get any closer, though. See, we've got to be careful around here, girls. Yeah. You don't want to go near the edge of the river, right? He's ginormous. Did you see the spiky bits on his back? He's gone. No, he's there. I see his tail. And he's going to launch up and eat Matt's head. Yeah. They can eat Mommy and Daddy. Yeah. And Matt. <laughs> it would take a pretty big crop to eat Matt. <laughs> He'd have to be a big crop. It'd be a good meal. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, Maddie, Sarah and Mia are out on the boat exploring the East Alligator River. It's been an eventful morning and the crew had some close encounters with some toothy locals. Mia's been desperate to see crocs in the wild and as Justin pulls the boat into the ramp, he spots something that will make his daughter's day. Now, as we got back into the boat ramp, we were literally 50 metres away. We spotted a little baby croc sitting on the bank and I just had to have it. Oh my Look. God! We got one! <laughs> Ooh, where there's a baby, there's normally yeah, a mama. Sarah, do you want to hold this and let me back in the boat? Oh my god! Look at this. How's that? Oh my god. What do you think? You want to touch it? Look at, Have a look at that. Oh my god. He's so tiny. He's just chilling, just hanging out. Now, even though this thing's tiny, it still makes your hand shake a little bit. The back of his it's like so. What do you think of that? that? So you wanted a crocodile? You wanted to see a crocodile? <laughs> no. We went one pets. better, baby. Daddy caught you a crocodile. Dad told me I was going to see a crocodile, but I didn't think he'd catch one. Come sit here. Put him on your lap. Oh, my God. Look at that. There is a crocodile on my lap. What do you think? Yeah, come that on, hold him. Awesome. You can hold him. Uh, we do have permits for this, so we are actually, we're, we're allowed to do this. Um, but how good is this get my daughter up and close with the biggest reptile in the world and Australia's number one predator. That's we'll awesome. let him go? Yeah. He's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, hopefully he goes that way and doesn't bye come bye near Jemima. me. Bye-bye, Jemima. See you, dude. Bye-bye, Jemima. That's really cool, huh? He doesn't care. Let's get the spade out of the water. The time spent exploring the East Alligator River system has meant the water crossing has changed for the better. Even though it's now dropped to a safe level, the boys take every precaution to make sure the gear and the crew make it across safe and sound. Well, the fact that we're going to be in Ireland land in one hour is the most exciting thing. I've been waiting 30 years for this. When you first get into the water, when you come into the water, go into the water real slow. Just, just creep it into the water so all the air comes out from under the cars. Yeah. So everything floods under the car before you start making momentum. I'm excited to get an Arnhem for sure. Can't wait. Now, Sarah and the kids, they're, they're perfectly safe. We send them across in the boat. There's no way I was going to put my wife, my daughter, uh, or my boys in that situation. Um, so there's no, no dramas there that, you know, we've got, we've got big boys in all the cars. The anticipation of getting over there, we're seven days in now. It's at the end of my fingertips. Oh, I'm excited to get over there. Everyone stay safe, stay cool. Just everyone, just relax. Yeah, and if anything yeah. goes... Relax. Yeah, don't if anything panic, happens, rush. don't panic. Yep. Just, just wait and we'll be on the CVs talking about there's, it. There's the people here. We've got the experience to do it. We've got yep. the gear to do it. We'll get you out. The whole crew has been waiting patiently for the right time to cross. And to be safe, they decide to cross in pairs so there's at least one car on either side. One of Justin's mates, John, is a local and he's waiting on the Arnhem Land side to meet them once they cross. He'll be their guide for the next few weeks. This will be the most exciting thing that I've done for a long, long time. 
There you go, Rob. We're all good, no problems. No problem, boy, no problem. You! How you going, Chase? I'm through, guys, I'm through. We're good, we're good. Welcome to Arden Land, baby! Bobby and Dave are the last two cars to cross. The whole crew has waited a week to cross into Arnhem Land and with just metres to go before they touch down... We're doing it! We're doing it! The emotions start to kick into overdrive. Yeah. We made it! We're in Arnhem! Yeah, boys. Welcome to Arnhem Land. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well done, son. After a week of waiting around, the Patriot Campers convoy have finally made it into Arnhem Land. It's time to put the gear to the test and explore one of the most spectacular parts of the world. Welcome to Arnhem Land. The Arnhem Land exploration begins in Goonbalanya, where John is based. He'll introduce Justin and his family to the traditional owners, who have permits waiting for them. These permits give the Patriot Campers crew access to all of Arnhem Land, and with John as their guide, they'll get the full NT experience. Welcome to Arnhem Land, team. Finally made it. This is unbelievable. I can't wait to explore. Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? It's really hard to leave, I tell you that. This is absolutely epic, and they have had some rain up here on the floodplains. It's crazy how different it is just crossing that river. A couple of days ago, we didn't even think we were going to make it. Finally get to see how this big girl goes off road. We'll make camp for the night and then we'll um, keep heading north tomorrow, right? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. John's pushed on ahead to collect some supplies for the next couple of weeks. But as the weather takes a turn for the worse, he finds himself in a bad situation. Real bad. The Patriot Campers crew have just crossed into Arnhem Land and they're on their way to Goonbalanya. The convoy's guide, John, has raced on ahead to collect some supplies and he's found himself in a bad situation. Now this is why you bring along a guy named Spanners. Dave, you better get up here, mate. Looks like you need a mechanic, man. Hey, mate, how you going? How you going? What's happening? Fancy oh. seeing you up here again. <laughs> What's happening? I think I've done the alternator, mate. I can smell the batteries cooking, eh? Oh, dude, that stinks. Yeah. Obviously, I've run into a spot of bother here and Patriots are, you know, nice enough to help me out and got to watch them across the East Alligator and that today and didn't think they would actually be helping me on the side of the road on the way to my little destination, so it sort of worked out good. All right, Dave, you want to grab some tools, man? Grab a multimeter. Let's yeah. have a look and see what we can do, right? Yeah. Let's see what we can sort out. Let's see what we can sort out. Give me a sec. Oh, no. Appreciate cool. the help, fellas. What have we got there? 12 mil. 13 mil. 13 mil. 12. If there's one thing I love to do that's proving Maddie wrong, this has got to be a 12 mil for sure. You're going to be right too, eh? <laughs> you will with that, because that, now that looks like a 13, eh? It's, yeah, it's definitely a 13. A blind man can say it's a 13 mil, Juzzy. I don't know what you're going on about. I'm going to give you the 12. I'm going to give you the 13. No, I don't, even, I don't even want it. I know he's right. I know he's right. Here, get it, yeah. Dave knows I'm right too. <laughs> ah, it is a 12, Matt. I'm pretty sure that says 13 on no. it. <laughs> it, says, it says 12. Do you know what you're doing there? Damn it. Damn it. Why is Matty always right? You know what you're doing there, Josh? No, actually, I don't. <laughs> I just wanted to say what size, <laughs> what size the bolt was. I design stuff. I don't even know what that really does. I'm surprised that even fit there. Just blow the car not running, we've got 13. Yeah, I reckon your biggest problem is going to be with that sort of voltage will be something catching on fire. Yeah. Batteries being boiled with the alternator running that high. It is definitely going to need to be changed out. Where would you get a spare from, mate? I can get one from work. We've got a 2010, same car as this, so I can get the alternator out of that. Where's work? How far away? 26 k's back to Goombalanya. Oh, no Pelly. Yeah, back the same way we just came. We're going that way. Yeah. And we'll while we're at camp, we'll, we'll, we'll pull the alternator off this. Yep. And while you guys go get the other alternator off the other one. All right, let's do it. Let's get some recovery gear out. Um, but we just pull it beyond ram. ram or something? Yeah, ram for sure, mate. Just behind the trailer. 1,050 newton metres, dude. You can pull another another six of these, you know? This only got a little baby little motor in. And I can say that because I've got the same motor. All right, right I'm not hanging. I'm not <laughs> hanging anything on anyone. Right right just Matt's got the most <laughs> torque here, and that's just a fact. There's nothing we can do about it. 
the boys decide that the only way to get going is to tow the 79 series behind the Super Am, which, in theory, shouldn't be a problem. It looks like the convoy won't be making it to their destination tonight, and they'll have to pull short, set up camp, and wait for Dave and John to get back with the spares. Do you feel it, Matt? Do you know it's there? No, nah, mate. Don't even feel it. That thing's an animal, eye. Absolute monster. Animal. Yeah, OK, see you all good, mate? Yeah, mate, she's doing fine. Uh, are you allowed if there's any dramas, mate? Will do. With the Super Am comfortably towing the broken down cruiser, the convoy banks some Ks and head towards camp for the night. Everyone's settled into a rhythm, but before you know it, another water crossing presents itself. And this time, Sarah gets into the driver's seat of the PX2 Super Tourer. All right, baby, you in low range? I'm in low range. Got your set of diff lock on? I have got the diff lock on. This is a good one to practice on because it's probably perfect height to try and get a bow wave going. So try and get your speed, like your right speed, that you'll see like a little, it'll look like a little tsunami coming off your bull bar, you know what I mean? Yeah, gotcha. And you'll just see it rolling the water and pushing all the water away from the car. OK, done. All right, babe, go for it. You excited? Yeah. Here we go. This is going to be cool. Doing it for the gear. Have fun, Leah. I will. We got this, Molly. We got this. Ooh. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> Mom. How's that feeling, babe? Yeah, good. It's not even high, babe. Not too bad at all. Did you get that bow wave going? Yeah, it didn't come up over the bonnet. It's exactly what you want. You just want to push it in front of you, you know? Yeah, no, I saw a little bit, but yeah, no, it was easy. It was good. Good stuff. Well done. Sarah and Mia nail their first river crossing. Justin and the twins follow closely behind the girls in the mega tourer, which eats it up, even with the toy hauler in tow. But it's time for Maddie to cross in the Super Ram. Mega tourer? That's cute, Justin. Do you want me to talk you through this one or what? Oh, I think I'll be right, mate. I've seen you blokes go through. This one's pretty tough, dude. It's pretty technical. I'm not going to lie. All right, Casey, let's go. Right. That thing is so badass, dude. Just give it. I'm gonna get bowled over by this, dude. <laughs> Bit left hand down, Casey, oh, left on. hand down. I'm gonna lose my pluggers here. <laughs> what an animal. Thing is an animal, dude. It's been a long, tiring and emotional day, but the Patriot Campers convoy has finally made it into Arnhem Land. Setting up camp has become routine for this crew who get everything unloaded and unpacked in no time. It's going to be a long night getting John's car back on the road, but tomorrow is when the action really kicks into high gear. Next time on Patriot Games. The Patriot Campers crew are finally into Arnhem Land, and it's time to explore. The boys put their off-road gear, tinnies and trucks to good use to help out the locals. Might go low range, that's a bit low there, right? Eh? And on the way to Willoughby, the wet season just keeps on giving with more treacherous water crossing. All right, so what's the plan? We get rid of this one first? Yep. Yep. These trucks have never been this deep. Hardcore, man, that's deep. Holy crap. Super here. That's real deep. 